And then the uh, most exciting product, Rolf, can I invite you to come up here? We've got a doctor in the house here <laughs> to test this one out. So this so is legitimate. Rolf is, is one of the creators of, uh, uh, one of the founders of the company Sensory AG. What Sensory has done is they've created the first mobile virtual reality gloves. Hold on, I think we're going to be able to we're see. We're going to try to do a demo here. Up on the screen, if we can get it behind us, what he's looking at right now. Oh yeah, there it is. There we go. What are you doing painting on the so walls there, So you can see Rolf is wearing these gloves, and Rolf is in an application that allows him to actually paint in three dimensions using these gloves. So he's picking the color that he wants to use, and he's Aww. drawing. Ah, that's, that's how wow. he feels about our talk, I think, right there. <laughs> Um, and he's able to actually paint in a virtual studio use it, uh, using the gloves that you're seeing here. That's fantastic. This looks like Ready Player One, and I know that's set in 2044. So, I mean, what is that, 26 years in the future, and we're here already with that? They that's have to hone the technology a little. It's going to take We've got time. 26 years to kind of get into a virtual oasis, but that's kind of cool. Yeah. How is that? Are you, play, are you playing us a tune now, Rolf? Are you playing us a tune? Uh, I can't play the piano, but that's exactly You're just <laughs> jamming out there? <laughs> right. <laughs> right, for all we know, you're playing Beethoven, actually. <laughs> Sounds perfect. So these are sensor gloves here, so it's taking away the need for a, what, a, a camera to monitor and to Yeah, sense? it actually, you know, the piano is a good example because what these gloves do is they actually have sensors to actually recognize the movement of each individual finger. So up until now, virtual, uh, virtual reality, you, you knew which way the hand was moving and maybe you had sort of claw-like technology where you could see maybe the thumb and all the fingers together. With this technology, you can actually see what each individual finger is doing and use each finger independently in a virtual reality world. Can we try the kitchen, actually? Do you have that one? The table. <laughs> Yesterday, Rolf was demonstrating this technology to me and I did what he just did. I pulled out the chair and it seemed so realistic that I went to sit in the chair. And Ralph said to me, do not sit in the chair, there is no chair. <laughs> so it's a nice little candlelit dinner for one. That's great. Where did your steak go? Oh, don't eat it anyway. Ralph is a vegetarian. <laughs> so. <laughs> so what's Indiegogo's relationship to these um, up and coming designs and technology? Yeah, it's a really good question. So, um, so Sensory AG actually is about to launch their crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo in February. Right. Um, what's been wonderful about Indiegogo <laughs> is while we launched now, we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary here at, at CES. When we originally launched, we were a pure uh, crowdfunding destination. We were just a place to, um, to basically run a crowdfunding campaign and get your initial funding. Strictly raising money. Strictly raising money, right. Now, we enable, um, we enable companies to go all the way from concept, from an idea, to market. So with some of these companies, like MeFold, for example, MeFold ran a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. They raised well over a million dollars. Then they continued to raise money on our platform after their crowdfunding campaign was over. Now, uh, last month, we officially launched our marketplace. And now MeFold just sells these products on Indiegogo to the over 10 million people that come to Indiegogo every month looking for in innovative products to buy. Um, same thing with Travis Translator. They started with crowdfunding. Uh, they are also entering our marketplace uh, in the next month once they finish shipping to all of their backers. Which feels to me like a response to a, a reality that a lot of people with great ideas probably stumbled across, which is that an idea is great, raising some money is great, and, and then what? Right, absolutely. What do you do? And the reality is, as I'm sure many people here at CES could tell you, developing, in particular, a hardware product is hard. So at Indiegogo, um, what we did is, over the last few years, we've partnered with companies that can help entrepreneurs all the way through the life cycle. So um, for Travis Translator, for example, we, they worked with Aero Electronics, our partner, to look at all of the all of the components that would be put in this product to make sure that they could actually source those components and those components wouldn't get to the end of their life and require Travis to re-architect the product. They got help in, in getting those components and also got it, and now through a partnership we recently struck with Ingram Micro, advice on how to distribute those products, whether they should 
put them in warehouses, um, how they should do the actual delivery of the products to the stores or to the people that are buying them. So do you have to have a campaign in order to get into the marketplace or is it just open to anybody with a good idea and a good product? It's a great question. For the marketplace, it's the one place on Indiegogo that you don't actually even have to run a crowdfunding campaign. If you have a great innovative product and you want to reach an audience of, of people looking for innovative products, you can do that on Indiegogo even if you've never run a crowdfunding campaign.